ACC tournament coming up this season. Huge game here. Great to be with you. We're excited about it. And that's Kurd pouring it across, touching 69 with an opening strike. Numbers for the senior Ritter, who's hit eight home runs, a Virginia Tech team that's third in the NCAA in Dingers. It's going to be 0-2 to Ritter here. Kurd probably deserved a better fate at Louisville. Struck out a season-high 10, but got a no decision. Went seven innings. Lily Walker took the loss in the game she pitched, but the opposition batting just 140 off of Kurd this year, who really grew up before our eyes in the season last year when the Blue Devils hosted the Super Regional. And it's going to be over the outreach glove of Vega. And Ritter with a good piece of two-strike hitting. Emma Ritter has some of the best bat-to-ball skills I've ever seen in college softball. And here she shows it. 70-mile-per-hour fastball. Doesn't try to do too much. Actually, a bit of an uncharacteristic swing, sort of a chop swing. Finds a hole in right center field and gets things started for the Hokies. Here's Green, who's been a pretty patient hitter at the plate this year and is Really had a huge season, 461 for the senior, making her 31st start tonight. Curd. That's a strike. Torres behind the plate for Duke this evening. And she's thrown out three would-be base stealers in nine attempts. The number there is nine. Opposition does not run against Torres too much. A little bit of a modified pitch out there. The other part of that, and Coach Young was talking to us about it yesterday, the pitching staff, really a lot of holding runners is, falls on them. Yeah, absolutely. She has a ton of confidence in Kelly Torres and Francesca Freelich behind the plate. They'll sort of split time. It's going to be fouled, and it'll be strike two. Ritter, 19 steals in 21 attempts. A look there at... Torres a little shaken up. Torres has logged a lot of games behind the plate as a Blue Devil. A little bit outside, I guess, there, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's an interesting aspect of this game because this one misses off the outside edge. But you can see Torres is more concerned with the run game. She's not framing that pitch as much. Yep. She's immediately going. And that's the pressure that a base runner like Emma Ritter puts on a defense. Third came back over the middle, fouled out of play by Green, who handles the bat very well for the Hokies, who are 25-5-1, undefeated in the ACC. They've won seven of eight coming in here. 61 degrees, mostly sunny. And compared to the rain, driving in from the coast today, this is beautiful weather. A little chilly for rain's taste, but still. <laughs> Hit in the air. Over is Goddard, who's playing in right field tonight for Duke for the first out. Ball usually carries pretty well here. Hokies hit a program record 100 round trippers last season. Here's Cameron Fagan, the second baseman, and one of the three seniors at the top of the lineup for Virginia Tech. Like one home plate umpire tonight, William Gomalek. Jacob Agee, Agee is uh, over at first, and then Heath Walker is the third base umpire tonight. See the numbers for Fagan. Denellen, Florida is where she's from there. It's around the Gainesville area. How she got away from UF, who knows? Yeah, it comes from a pretty deep lineage of softball players. Her two sisters played at a very high level. Haley Fagan over at Auburn and Sammy Fagan at Missouri. But man, what a week Cameron Fagan had last week. Up to that point, she kind of felt like she had a slower start. Still was bad 315, but now 
the average has ticked up quite a bit. Yeah, D1 softball player of the week. And that's going to be strike three. Curd paints the outside corner, two down. How about that pitch from Curd there? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a difficult day for the Hokies if Curd can paint the black like she does there, especially glove side against these left-handers. Her two-seam will oftentimes work arm side, meaning into the batter. But here she paints the outside edge and freezes Cameron Fagan for the strikeout. Bree Peck fouls it off, third baseman for the Hokies. Peck the junior. Fagan wearing 97, Peck 88. What was your number? 14. Why not 13? I don't know. Birthday's the 14th. So. Oh, okay. There's a reason. Could you imagine, though, having 99 or 88? It just seems like those are... It is interesting. I'm sure there's a reason numbers. for it. Well, I'm there's sure. got to be. Might be the only jersey that was available. Maybe not. <laughs> Curd rocking and firing and working ahead. This is her 10th start of the year. 134 ERA, as you saw at the beginning of the show. Four and two mark. And has struck out now 75 in 43 innings. Yeah, Kurt has really good swing and miss stuff. Sits at a 30% swing and miss rate. Just one of the very best in Division I. So for the Hokies, if they can find barrels early in this game, even if it's just foul balls, it's a good sign as they move later into the game. And that's going to be strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to conclude the frame. Hokies. Interesting that Virginia Tech's going with the lefty. Tonight, Duke has hit left-handers pretty well. One and one to Giselle Tapia leading things off for the Blue Devils. Chops this one through, and it'll be a dribbler, and both teams have the leadoff hitter aboard. This is kind of, you know, the bounces of the field so well. Yeah, absolutely, and this is a lineup change. So for folks who haven't watched a ton of Duke softball this year, or you, if you have, you usually see Deanna Jennings in that leadoff spot. But now the senior, Giselle Tapia, steps in, has great bat-to-ball skills, and we see it there on display. Claire Davidson leading the team in average home runs, doubles, and RBIs. Been the engine of the Duke offense this season. And has gotten better and better every year. Yeah, I think that'd be, to say the least, she's gotten better year over year. But I look at 2024, and the common denominator there is now she's not a pitcher anymore. She used to play both roles. Now, instead of going to do bullpens during practice, she takes BP, gets more swings, and I think you can clearly see it in the stat book. Yeah, almost as many extra base hits as she had all of last year. She's going to be ahead here of the freshman 3-0. and Do you turn her loose ring? I think early in this game, yeah, give her the green light. It's going to be ball four. They clearly didn't want to give Davidson anything even remotely close that she could get a bat on. And now Vega will bat for the Blue Devils. Vega's followed by Gold, Torres, Zampa, Goddard, Baker, and Jennings. They're facing this freshman from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, the 6-1 and one Mazarone. And there's Vega, great. Sophomore campaign for her. Squared to bunt. Came up empty, and that's going to be strike one. Yeah, Duke early trying to manufacture runs. They've done this all year in that they, they do it in all different types of ways. They use the long ball. They use doubles in the gap. But they are not afraid to, you know, go back to the basics, put the ball on the ground, and move runners. Marissa Young, what a job she has done here putting together this program. 239 wins, 100 losses in her seventh season at the helm of the Duke program. 
very hands on too. you and I were talking about it a little bit before the game here tonight and still throws bullpens. Yeah, she'll throw live and she's got good stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's not just the resume of three straight 40 win season. She also can dice you up with a curveball, throw a change up, rise ball still. Coach Young definitely still has it. Oy. Did you ever catch for her? Yeah, yeah, but at, when she's throwing, typically the batters are swinging a lot, hitting it. It's when they foul it off and it you know hits you in the thigh that those aren't the fun days. Mm. I would have loved to have caught her in her prime. That would have been fun. Yeah, she was great in college, absolutely outstanding. It's going to be a strike. And so we've got our first full count. Yeah, we'll take another look at this one. Mazarone is going to work glove side and paint the edge. Looks like given a little bit away, but you got to remember on that 1-1 count, I think um, our home plate umpire might have missed that call, so maybe a makeup call there. Driven in the air, carrying to the gap, and it will be off the wall. They're going to send the runners. The ball bounds away from the outfielders, and it's going to be Vega with an RBI double. And Duke strikes first. You know, we talked about the Virginia Tech offense in the open, but don't forget about the Duke offense. This time, Amina Vega gets her hands through this one, takes advantage of a pitch over the white. Addie Green unable to come up with it. Neither is Ritter. It bounces off the wall, and Duke is able to take advantage and score first here in this one. So for Vega, that'll be her ninth double of the season, 26 run driven in, and Duke strikes first here. Strike one to Anna Gold, the junior third baseman. Early in the year, became the first Blue Devil to hit two grand slams in a single game. Led the uh, second in the ACC in home runs a season ago. And quickly down 0 and 2. Been pressing a little bit, you think, though? Could be. Absolutely could be. Hitters, every hitter goes through a slump. But Coach Young has been so impressed by Anna Gold's ability not to take that to defense with her. And you got to credit these, these teams for circling on a goal in the lineup and attacking her effectively. It's this one in the air. And it's a short fly out. Runner will stay. Easy play for Addie Green. And that's a huge out and a huge confidence booster for the freshman in the circle, Emma Mazarone. If you can get out of this first inning with only the damage of the one run and you get on a gold out, that is a good sign for this Hokies team. Kelly Torres will get ready to stand in. Strike paints the outer half. Fort Lauderdale senior. Kelly Torres has been one of the heartbeat players for the Blue Devils, a big part of their three straight regionals and back-to-back -back super appearances. Yeah, she's been a leader for this team emotionally, physically, behind the plate with the, the battery of her pitching staff. That's been one of her points of pride is being a part of that battery. But she's also had a really good year offensively, has really good bat-to-ball skills, doesn't strike out often, and that's exactly what, who you want up to bat in this situation. They're going to appeal, no, and it'll be two and one. That's a nasty pitch, though, by Mazarone. When you have a ton of upspin as a hitter, you could kind of preset your hip hinge. Here she goes with a drop ball on the outside edge. Almost fools Torres. Torres holds up, but it looks like it catches the black anyway. And then to match that pitch with a changeup on the outside edge, if you tunnel that drop ball and that changeup by Mazarone, you'll see that it comes right at the same eye level, the same tunnel. So really difficult for a hitter to hit both. Torres has hits in 10 of her last 12 games. The ball bounds away. The run will score. Davidson comes to the plate, and Duke takes a two-zip advantage. And that one hurts. If you're the Hokies and Emma Mazarone, this one just gets away from the freshman. Looks like she's going to try to go drop all again. 
but just gets away. And when you're in control of an at bat like that and you give up a run that way, then you let that last pitch bleed into the walk here. Second walk issued of the inning. So right now, Kelly Torres has rounded first base after the walk. So this is a play that Duke will run often. They're trying to steal a run. Amina Vega, as soon as the ball is given back to the pitcher, Amina Vega will take off, and Kelly Torres will at the same time. We'll see if they keep running it. See, Kelly Torres will go. And it's this cat and mouse game, and Kelly Torres will end up at second base. So Torres diving head first. Virginia Tech, they looked like they were trying, they had it pretty well scouted, but how do you deal with that? So you kind of have to, I mean, you can do a couple different things. I think the strategy that works most effectively is what Cam Fagan was doing early in that whole sort of fiasco, if you will. Walk Torres back, give it up to the pitcher, and kind of play the cat and mouse game. Who's going to stop first until you see Vega break? And Vega being the runner at third base, as soon as she you breaks and you feel like you have a chance to get her in a pickle, then you can find it out. Pete Diamore. Uh, Dia Moore for Virginia Tech, the head coach, in his sixth year. And we're going to have a pinch hitter here early. So hitting for Zampa for the Blue Devils is going to be Freelich. And talking to head coach Mercy Young before the game, they put... Now what do you think they were discussing in that mound meeting? Well, I think it's to break up the rhythm for the freshmen. One thing that Pete Demore has said about Mazarone is she's unflappable, and that is what a quality to have in a freshman pitcher. But you know, sometimes the wheels can fall off the cart a little bit, so you want to break the rhythm and give her an opportunity to catch her breath. She's done a really nice job of attacking hitters this season, though she has walked a couple of Duke players so far here, and what's turning to be a prosperous first inning for the Blue Devils. It's going to be one and one here to Freelich. And one other thing, Patrick, too, is you have a freshman behind the plate as well. So the batteries, they're youthful. This is probably the biggest game so far of this of the year for these two. And so I'd like to see Zoe Yeager initiate that meeting with Emma Mazarone and bring the infield together. But that is something that she will learn and grow into throughout her career. 2-1. Now three balls and a strike. And and that one, that one was that one was missed by her home plate umpire, but He's got a difficult job. It's difficult to see a 70 mile per hour pitch coming at you. But it's not like Mazarone has been missing all around the zone. She's attacking these Duke hitters. I was going to say, it was a kind of a tight zone. It's going to be chopped. Oh, nice play. Made it short. They're going to get Vega in a run down. Did she die back in? Yes, she did. Bases loaded. And we'll see if Virginia Tech challenges. Really nice base running by Amina Vega there. And a nice job by Ani Rose to get, give, up, give the ball up. This one was tight. Great angle. I think she just missed the tag. This will be a really good look at it, I believe. Yeah, I'd like to see Bree Peck stay further back and let that ball get deep. Catch the ball, drop the tag immediately down. I think because she was so or a lot closer to home plate, she didn't give her, herself enough room to work. Ball gets away from the catcher again, and it's going to be a third Duke run. Vega comes in after driving in a run. 3 nothing Blue Devils. And this is a drop on the outside edge. It just gets under the glove of Zoe Yeager, the freshman, allowing another run to score. And I think, you know, for Pete Demore, he's going to come out and give, give some words to our home plate umpire. This is not about the play at hand. This is about the strike zone. He's fighting for his freshman pitcher. He's fighting for his battery. Right now, they're just struggling to find a rhythm. Things aren't going their way. And, you know, head coach Pete Demore is usually a very mild-mannered, quiet guy. So you know when he's getting verbal, and talking to the umpire, you know it's it's because he's fighting for his team. And I can't blame him based on the pitches that 
if I feel like have been over the play for the Hokies. Back up the box. And that's just a mental error. Didn't want to trade the run, but maybe should have turned and threw it to first to get the sure out. Still just one down, and the base is loaded again with Goddard reaching. Yeah, this is a freshman moment. This is a freshman moment, second and third. Check the runner at third, and then go to one and get outs early in this game. And that's a thing that the seniors and the veterans on this field have to be yelling to her 1-1-1 one, one, one immediately up here in the booth. Obviously, we can't hear those, those conversations, if you will. One of the team captains is Jada Baker. Had a home run a couple weeks ago against Liberty. Ball usually flies out of here pretty well. Duke has hit 14 home runs here at home this season. They've not played a lot at home, though. 32 taters here at the friendly confines for the Blue Devils a season ago. Baker resting the bat on his shoulder. The 0-2. Slaps this one, and it's going to be foul. It was interesting this week, too, to talk with Coach Young and talked about kind of patient but aggressive at the plate. And I think we're seeing a lot of that playing out here for Coach Young's club. Yeah, and they're putting the balls on the ground. Mazarone has a lot of upspin on some of her pitches. And so they're taking what's given to them. I mean, you look at the scoreboard, there's only two hits for Duke right now, the best being the Amina Vega shot out to left center field. But other than that, it hasn't been a ton of hard hit balls. Mazarone has done a really good job of attacking in the zone. It's been the mental errors by the Virginia Tech Hokies defense. That bounced in a better stop behind the plate that time for the freshman Jaeger. Count even at two balls and two strikes. Three runs in already for Duke here. And what is a lengthy bottom of the first for the Blue Devils. Up in the zone. Skied in the air and the second out. Runner will tag and go. The ball trickles in and it's going to be a sack fly as Torres speeds home. 4 0 Duke. Wow. Blue Devils aggressive here at home early. Yeah, really nice job by this Duke Blue Devils offense to find ways to score here. It's Kelly Torres tagging from third. Addie Green gets it in, but does not get it in time to get the speedy Torres. And Duke is up 4 0. That ball gets away, but it took a bounce where it got back to the plate pretty quickly. Freelich sharing a laugh down at third. Goddard on at second. Took second on that throw in from the outfield on the Baker sack fly. It's going to be fouled back by Jennings. Deanna Jennings, Houston, Texas sophomore, usually bats at the top of the lineup. In a way, you're hoping she can turn the lineup for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's a leadoff hitter in the nine spot, and that's such a weapon for this Duke offense, especially when you turn it over to Giselle, Giselle Tapia. And it looks like our home plate umpire has called her out of the box, which is nothing new to Deanna Jennings, but that just means a strike will be assessed to Deanna Jennings. And by out of the box, what we mean is any part of Deanna Jennings' foot crossing that white line. And something that she's battled throughout her young career and tried to adjust on. Come into her, she fouled it back. So it stays a ball and two strikes. Duke batting around here in the bottom of the first. And that's why you see Deanna Jennings so far off of the plate, because she works into the plate. And on that outside pitch is when her foot will creep over that white line. Back up the middle, bounded off the pitcher, and it's going to be an out at home. Freelich eliminated one, th uh, two. Come on, ACC Network at six. And then Rain and I will be here Sunday 
That's also, a, or Saturday, excuse me, that's another game where it's going to be SRO. Hokies have Corey McMillan at the plate. Transfer from the Greensboro area. Has all the tools and brings a wealth of experience with her. Yeah, anytime you can match up at, at, or elite athleticism, excuse me, and experience, Corey McMillan swings it, one of the hardest swings on the team, throws 70 miles per hour overhand, and she's a junior, so she's a veteran. She's been in these situations before, and boy, she's having a really good junior campaign. Inside for a ball. Transfer from Radford is McMillan. Curd, by the way, comes into tonight and into this weekend series. Eighth in the ACC in strikeouts. Has a pair here today, and that's some of that effectively wild there. Yeah, and you even saw it on the pitch before the 0-2 count. It was really tight in on the inside edge. Might have even caught the black, but because she's effectively wild, Kelly Torres will see her set up in the middle of the plate because sometimes the pitch that maybe should be going in will go away. So Kelly Torres can't really set up and sit in one position or another. This is going to drop. So it'll stay two balls and two strikes. So you caught. How difficult is it to catch someone who's effectively wild? It can be extremely difficult, maybe not to catch them, but to receive them. And what I mean by that is frame up pitches. Because if you have someone that has really dialed command and you know it's going to come on the outside edge, you can set up and make it look real pretty for the umpire. But when someone's effectively wild, it just makes that a little bit more difficult. So now Kurt has seen it work full. There's been a few foul balls after this 0-2 beginning for McMillan in the at bat but she's battled back Chatfield is on deck the first baseman but McMillan trying to get the Hokies offense cranked up could be trouble and it's going to be a catch for Goddard there with Vega coming out One down, a Hokies offense that has 67 home runs this year, averaging over eight runs and over 10 hits a game. And Kurt has sat down four in a row. Michelle Chatfield, the first baseman. And Freelich has taken over for Goddard out there in right. Or Goddard moved over to left for Zampa. Didn't realize you were going to have all this air control traffic you were going to have to be doing, did you? Well, you know, <laughs> and we see kind of the pitches that look like they hit the black on both sides mm. not be called. And so it's something that now can't be a surprise to you later in the game. As an offense and as a pitching staff, you have to adjust from this point on. Chatfield, first baseman. Michelle Chatfield, one of the freshmen. And for a freshman, Chatfield has the remarkable ability. She doesn't carry an unsuccessful at bat to the next at bat with her. She's been an aggressive swinger, kind of a all or nothing. And Coach Pete Diamora told us this week that not tinkering a whole lot with that mentality. It's been very successful so far. And that's a four pitch walk. Yeah, there we see the base on balls to the power bat of Michelle Chaffield. But what in that bat? Because the four pitch base on balls doesn't do it justice. 
Kurds asking, hey, where is that? She gets the answer that it's down. She knows she has to make the adjustment. And that's the poise that you see out of the sophomore in the circle, something that she's developed more and more throughout her career. Maya Luca takes a strike. Senior batting 333. This is her 10th start of the year. Out of Reston, Virginia. Up around the D.C. area. Here's the 0-1 to Luca. Yeah, Luco has just gotten this opportunity through hard work. Senior year this year, for her first three years, she was a pinch runner, but she didn't stop working. Always in the cages, always battling, and then got a few opportunities this year as a pinch hitter. Now is a mainstay in this lineup, and what a year the senior is having. And there's the difference you were talking about last half inning between Torres and Jaeger. Torres, this is not the first rodeo for her, so initiates the meeting out in the circle. Trying to calm her sophomore pitcher down. Luko fouls it back. Ball and two strikes. And to your point, Patrick, about when to go out, what to say. And that's a lot of work that Kelly Torres has done behind the scenes in understanding what each of her pitchers need. Cassie Curry might need a joke. Jayla Wright might need a stern talking to. Lily Walker might need a joke as well. And so Kelly Torres has done that homework to understand what each of her pitchers need. Outside, two and two, Torres and Freelich, who's playing now in right, splitting time this year. What a luxury to It's almost an embarrassment of riches behind the dish. Yeah, and two seniors as well, two veterans on this team. They've been there before. And what a luxury, like you mentioned, to have these two women behind the plate and to save both of their legs as we head further down the stretch. Luco went three for three against Louisville a couple weeks ago in that series. Hit a two run homer against Pitt the next week. Locked in here. That's outside. The count runs full again. And down 4 0. This is exactly the type of at bats you want if you're the Virginia Tech offense. Yeager's on deck. Good at bat for Luco here. Let's see what Kurt goes to after that meeting. That funky delivery. And she will get her for her third strikeout of the night. Two down for Jaeger. Yeah, this time, Kurt's going to go arm side. And Luko's trying to foul off the inner half. She's trying to battle with the inner half, but she also has to protect the outer half, which causes the sort of check swing in the strikeout. First strike to the freshman. 349 on the year. So obviously the first time that Zoe Yeager has seen Cassidy Curt in college, but not the first time that these two have played against or with one another. Back in the summer of 2018, I actually coached a little bit of their travel team where they were teammates. So although she's seeing her for the first time here, she knows what Cassidy Curt brings to the table. Got her on three pitches there. So after the 4 nothing, and here's Tapia who got aboard with a Dribbler up the middle, and the floodgates just opened. Let's see how Mazarone settles back down here. You know, it's interesting. They missed Florida State this year. I'm talking about Virginia Tech. They missed Clemson. So this was a huge start here tonight for Virginia Tech because really, as we noted in the open, a lot of preseason or rather a uh, postseason implications here. Virginia Tech a possibility to host a regional if they were to come in here and get a series win or a sweep. And now you look at it, opportunity to stay undefeated in the ACC and an opportunity to 
perhaps be the top seed coming in. But in a way, a tough night for the freshman, at least in that first inning, and here it's two and two. Yeah, definitely a rough start in the first. You give up, you know, a dribbler up the middle that found a hole, but then it's the walks, it's the wild pitches, it's the mental mistakes that really handicap you in the bottom half of the first. But I love the decision by Pete DeMore to put her back out there, to keep Zoe Yeager in the game, because this is a growing moment. He's thinking in the future, and of course, she's really good. I mean, let's not look past that. She gave up two hits, only one of them really was a shot. And now she's gonna learn from this experience. She's gonna battle and she's gonna feel the adversity and know how to improve upon it. Two for two night for Tapia. Pair of singles. And that's the third Duke hit. Tapia has a pair. Yeah, Giselle Tapia, the senior, has just been so consistent, has hit in really every single position in this lineup, one through nine. Doesn't care. She's a professional and just finds ways on base. This one, another really well-executed pitch by Mazarone, but Giselle Tapia does a really nice job of getting her barrel out in front of her and finding a hole. Claire Davidson, who drew a walk, would score on a wild pitch. Second run of the Blue Devil first. Davidson, ACC Player of the Week. After that series win at Florida State. And this one is for the gap. Going to be off the wall. Ball is retrieved, thrown into the infield, and the Blue Devils have a pair in scoring position. Davidson a double. Tapia stays put at third. No need to try to risk having a runner thrown out at home for the first out, especially when you're up four zip. And Davidson stays hot here. The senior takes advantage of a pitch middle in over the white, gets her hands up to it, and extends through off the wall. Line shot by the senior, and a double for Claire Davidson. Vega aggressive at the plate. What's the difference with Vega, you think, this year over last year where Offensively, especially, what's the difference? Well, she's limited the strikeouts a ton, and she's found ways to battle. She's adjusted pitch to pitch as opposed to at bat to at bat. And I also think, you know, she had a rougher start to the beginning of the year last year, so she's recognized that success is not linear. It's not going to happen all overnight. It's going to take ups and downs, ebbs and flows. And Amina Vega looks like a professional here in her sophomore year. Oh, two way outside. The thing that, and you know this as a Duke alum, I mean, there's the elitist repute. But, I mean, this is a very blue-collar softball program at Duke. I mean, it has been built Those are fighting from words. the bottom I, up. Those are I'm, I'm words telling you what the, what the perception is from others. Oh, okay. Not from me, from others. But, I mean, this is truly a homegrown grassroots program. It's been built from the ashes, if you were kind of built from the, the ground up. Absolutely, and humble beginnings. I mean, I remember early on we had a saying, build the house, and that's exactly what Marissa Young, the head coach here, has done, is build that house. This ball driven, and it's off the glove of Ritter. A pair of runs will score, and Vega has a three RBI game. Pitch to contact a little more this year. It has cut down on the home runs given up. As Limley, that's going to be a strike to Anna Gold. Now, I will say your former high school teammate and teammate here was an ace. Yeah, absolutely. Peyton St. George was an ace. <laughs> absolutely. And I would say Emma Limley on many teams would be that ace. Oh, absolutely. But just speaks to the depth of the pitching staff. That one driven high and hard. If it stays fair, it's going to be a homer, but it is foul. Boy, Gold got around on that in a hurry. Yeah. Lindley with a wry smile on her face as Gold runs past her. Yeah, and we've talked about the quote-unquote, you know, slower few weeks for Anna Gold, but that right there is what the junior is capable of. I mean, this ball, I want to say 260. I've never seen a ball hit that tree out there. 
A lot of Virginia Tech fans here in attendance tonight, and they thought that pitch looked good. And he's just allowed the two home runs this year. Opposition batting 166 off of her. Now it's two and two. Talking gold being slow, but I mean, she is, she still has an explosive bat, and the average is pretty good coming in. Not great, but pretty good. Yeah, and I, I think it, it attributes the reason she's cold, if you will, is because teams still circle her name. High drive. It's deep. Not, well, it's going to be off the wall. Thought that was headed out, but it got hung up in the alley. Gold slides into third. And it'll be the third run of the Blue Devil inning and will close the book on Mazarone. Seven runs she'll allow in her start here in Durham. That ball was blasted. How it didn't go out, I don't know. She just got a little too under it. I think vertically it might have gone out. I think out of goal thought it was going to go out. But when you're in a slump, all it takes is one swing. And for out of goal, that might have been it. As a team, Duke now a homer away from hitting for the cycle here against Virginia Tech. Torres drew a walk, credited with the steal, scored a run back in the first. And Duke continues to pour it on here, seven to nothing. Duke was listening collectively about how potent this Virginia Tech offense was all week leading up to this series. Yeah, absolutely. They, they understand the implications of this series. Both teams do. And I think both head coaches were trying to sort of minimize the hype. And especially with the implications for the ACC regular season title with this series here this weekend. But it's clear that Duke has come out firing on all cylinders. And that pitch right there is what makes Emma Lindley so good. She'll climb the ladder a bunch, a ton of really high spin, high velocity up in the zone, but she also can work the drop ball. Lindley misses there, two and two. Lindley, member of the second team in the ACC last year. Coaching staff for Virginia Tech thought that she really just took a lot on her shoulders last year. Felt like she had to be perfect in games for the Hokies to have a chance. Chopper to third. It'll be bobbled there. And Torres sprinting down the line. Safe at first. And we see Torres doing the continuation, rounding first. Trying to steal that run again. And we see Cam Fagan walking her back, but as soon as Fagan gives the ball to Lindley, you might see Torres go once again. Single opportunity they have to score. And that's going to be on the practice plan for the Hokies. They're definitely going to talk about it before tomorrow. But I think it's an underutilized base running trick for a lot of teams offensively, but you have to have smart base runners. Freelich swung through that one, 68 miles an hour, and it's no balls, two strikes. By the way, that was Peck's fourth error of the year that allowed Torres to score. The Virginia Tech team very confident coming in, but Duke has been the aggressor. Their foot has been on the pedal the entire time. 
been very uncharacteristic as well in the field for the Hokies. Both of these defenses have been tremendous this year. But uh, Virginia Tech, just not as sharp as you need to be, especially with as hot as Duke is at the plate right now. Yeah, absolutely. When you're playing elite teams, top 10 teams, you cannot give them any outs. You cannot give them room to work. And of course, we saw the brief peck error. But also, if you ask Emma Ritter, she should have had those two fly balls up against the wall. Very difficult plays, but one I think Ritter is capable of making. Two balls, two strikes now. And nobody out. Freelich strikes out. One away for Sarah Goddard. And another nasty pitch by the junior. That's that low rise ball that really just looks like a fastball, but high spin rate, high velocity in on the hands of Freelick and gets a strikeout, Emma Limley. First pitch swinging, towering fly. It'll be caught by Ritter. And sliding in safely is Torres. Boy, Torres has been excellent on the base paths tonight. Yeah, Torres right in the baseline. And if you're Ritter and Bree Pack, you want to pick a lane that does not interfere with that baseline to give yourself an opportunity. But the speed of Duke also putting pressure on this Hokies defense. Baker a sack fly that drove in a run back in the first. Duke could bat around again. Virginia Tech has only had eight batters so far through two innings. Two and nothing to count. Game two of the series tomorrow on ACC Network. And then 1 o'clock back here on ACC Network Extra on Saturday. Two balls, no strikes. And right now, Limley can't find the zone. Baker taking all the way for a strike. Four runs in each of the frames so far for Duke. Blue Devil offense that came in averaging over seven runs. And that's going to be three and two. Devils have won five of six coming in, seven and two in the ACC. Number five in the nation, undefeated here at home. That one driven, but yanked foul. Turned into a beautiful evening here, and down to 59 degrees. Still some sunshine in the right fielder's face. Lights are on here at the Duke Softball Stadium, and another pitch yanked foul. As Vega was way out ahead of it. That big structure you see there is going to be where the jumbotron is going to be by the time the ACC tournament rolls around. Duke was supposed to host it back in 2020 during the COVID year. And in talking to Coach Young, kind of a point of pride to be hosting that tournament here for this program that is so young. They're going to move the scoreboard over, take the Duke softball at the top and put it at the very top there. And in between will be a huge video board. Nice pitch by Lemley. Baker here and Ani Rose will be the hitter for Virginia Tech. 
Tough start for the Hokies here through two innings. Kurd, don't want to say she struggled, but piled up a lot of pitches in the top of the second. Now with an even larger lead, what would you like to see out of Kurd here if you're Coach Young? We'll just keep attacking the zone. Keep filling it up and let your defense work behind you. Don't give up the free passes and don't give up the beginning. Throws quickly behind 0-2. Another one of the freshmen for Virginia Tech, a bright future in Blacksburg. Curd the lefty. USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year watch list coming into this series. It's going to be deposited into right. And Virginia Tech for the second time. And Three innings has the leadoff hitter on with a single. And the one thing you cannot do is count the Virginia Tech Hokies out. This offense, we haven't even, they're not even up their second time through. Now we'll see Ritter lead off. The lead off, I should say, with her second at bat. But man, a really nice job by the freshman to find a way on and find a barrel. Ritter singled in the first. This is a Virginia Tech team that last weekend played out of conference at Alabama. Another top 20 matchup, the ACC and the SEC in that one. Bama took the first game on night one. But then in the second game, it was kind of a quiet one through the first three, but then the Virginia Tech offense came alive. And that's what they do so effectively is they make adjustments late into the game. It's really hard to get this team out that second time, but even more importantly, that third time through, so many veterans in this lineup who make adjustments. That first game, Virginia Tech did not get a runner past second. Chatfield, the big shot in that one, and that'll be through for a knock for Ritter. First two aboard for the Hokies. Emma Ritter so comfortable deep into count. She's really comfortable taking that first pitch strike and then battling later. This time she gets her barrel on top of the low rise ball by Cassidy Kerr, that two seam fastball that works up in the zone. And now there's something cooking for the Hokies offense. The conventional wisdom would be, hey, go up there, take pitches. Try to get base runners on. That's not the M.O. for Virginia Tech. They are pedal to the metal themselves offensively. And both Rose and Ritter very aggressive in their at-bats so far. I'm sure that was one of the discussion points here coming into the third. Addie Green flew out to right. Senior from Suffolk, Virginia. And for this offense, the approach doesn't necessarily change. You're still, I mean, there's a lot of ball game left here in the top of the third, a lot of room to work. And they've prepared specifically for Cassidy Kurt, and you can see it and how they're trying to get on top of pitches. And Patrick, as we talked about earlier, Kurt still trying to develop that off-speed pitch will be crucial as we head deeper into the game because this Hokies offense can hit velocity. One of their coaches, Coach Maymu, played for the Argentine national team. He could throw 83 underhand. So they're ready for 70 miles per hour from Cassie Kurt. Foul back. Maymu goes, what, 70% they said in practice when he's throwing? Yeah, I was, I was asking Coach Pete DeMore, hey, you know, does he have to kind of hold himself back a little bit? He said, yeah, he throws 70%. He could throw all day long. His best pitch is the rise ball, but he can really mimic any type of pitcher that they will see, which is such a huge advantage for the Hokies. Torres could not hang on there. Green, one of the leaders, if uh, Green actually is the leader in the ACC in doubles, has a dozen of them this year. Good gap to gap power. Has homered six times as well. Yeah. Strike.
strikes out. And that's a handful of them for Curd here in the game. And a huge out for Cassidy Curd to stunt the momentum of the Hokies. Gets the veteran Addie Green to chase up and away, unable to catch a barrel. And Cassidy Curd gets a strikeout. I don't want to accuse Kurt of working quickly, but she seems to have a little more pace, especially with the runners on. Yeah, she's not afraid to get the ball, get back onto the rubber, and keep moving. And that's actually a part of her game that has kind of shifted from last year to this year. Last year, the 25-second pitch clock. This year, the 20-second. That five-second difference has been an adjustment for all of these teams across the country. It's even been an adjustment here in the booth. But Cassie Kerr worked a little bit slower last year than this year, I'd say, but definitely has no problem using all of that time. Cute on the ground. Nice play by Gold at third. And she'll get the runner at second base. Look at this. Boy, talk about flashing some leather. Gold has made such strides defensively for the Blue Devils. Yeah, this is elite defense. A diving play in the 5-6 hole. And the presence of mind to get up and get rid of it and get the lead runner to second. Right now, Duke is trying to limit the big inning. And in doing plays like that, limiting that movement is so crucial. Really nice play by the junior on a gold. He's made a lot of strides defensively. Offense has always been there, but what she has done in improving what she does with her range and how she plays the position at third in her time here in Durham is pretty remarkable. Bree Peck struck out swinging to end the first. Took a pretty healthy cut at that one and sent it foul. Yeah, but actually the third base umpire had called a pitching clock violation. So instead of a strike, it's actually a ball on the batter, Bree Peck. So it's going to be one and one now, or two and oh, make it. Yeah, we can't see our third base umpire, but our third base umpire is in charge of making that call. Now, it is a delayed call. 2-0, that'll be a strike. And what delayed means is that, essentially, if Virginia Tech had hit a home run, then Virginia Tech can choose to have that result as opposed to the ball on the batter. So you let the play play out. It is 2-1 the count. Down at third, they're the one keeping that clock on the field this season. The third base umpire is running the timer. See it in his left hand there, and Keith Walker resets it. Yeah, it's interesting in the SEC, we see the clock being visible to the pitcher, the catcher, the entire field. The ACC, that is not obligatory this year. Next year it will be, but now, for now, the third base umpire is in charge of that call. Hit the opposite way, off the wall. Virginia Tech will plate their first run. And that is Peck with a run scoring double. A really nice swing here by Bree Peck. Controls her move forward, finds a barrel on the outside edge, and goes with this pitch. And hits a double off the wall. A huge hit for Virginia Tech, but an even bigger play the play before when Anna Gold got that runner at second. Instead of the two runs, Virginia Tech only scores one. McMillan a fly out her first time. Takes a cut, fouls it back. So Gold has at least saved Duke a run here. Or yeah, saved Duke a run here. Virginia Tech on the board, as we mentioned earlier. This is a club that comes in nine wins on the road and averaging over eight runs and double-digit hits per game this season. Hit high in the air. It is back, and it is going to be off the wall. Freelick can't get it. 
three-run homer. Virginia Tech back in the game just like that. Corey McMillan, the veteran, the Radford transfer, makes her presence known here in Durham, North Carolina. A play that Francesca Freelich definitely wants back, but if you're the Hokies, you're right back in this thing. And here's another extremely dangerous hitter in Chatfield who drew a four-pitch walk her only time at the plate. For McMillan, home run number 10, which is good for second on the Hokies team so far. What's even more remarkable, that's their 42nd home run on the road this season. And that's what a high octane offense that hits the long ball can do. It can get you right back into games. So the numbers there for Chatfield, the 14 home runs, but just the 26 RBIs. You probably would like to have a little more traffic out there when she comes up. But when you have McMillan in front of you, emptied the bases with the three run shot. So a four spot here. It's been a popular number tonight. Duke with four in each of the first two, and now Virginia Tech with four of their own. Two down, and Chatfield has a one ball, two strike count on her. This will be the 63rd pitch for Curd here. Two balls, two strikes. Chatfield has worked it full. 69 home runs, came in third in the NCAA, did Virginia Tech there. Commitment to the weight room has been part of the reason that they have had so much success hitting the softball. And that'll be the second walk drawn by Chatfield. Hokies happy to have the base runner. So here comes Luco. Over in left after Starting the game out there in right. What's impressive about Kurt after one of these visits from Coach Young comes right back and looks like a different pitcher when she fires that strike. And that's what you want to see out of your sophomore is can you bounce back? Give up the home run, give up the wall. Can you keep pounding the zone with strikes? That'll get through. Chatfield, now Luco aboard, and the Hokies are having a huge top of the third. Yeah, and you can certainly pound the zone as a pitcher, but the Hokies are going to pound it right back. This time, Maya Luco takes a pitch middle, middle. Really nice timing, really nice control forward, and barrels one up the middle. And it just does not get easier for this Hokies offense. And we're going to have a pitching change as Virginia Tech. And Kerr, earlier in her career, and has really worked her way into this role for the Blue Devils as a stopper out of the pen. And there's no high leverage situation that Coach Young does not feel comfortable putting Walker into. Yeah, she'll put Lily Walker in when there's two strikes, one strike, one ball, three balls. Lily Walker so comfortable with her back against the wall. Clean count here. She faces Jaeger, who gets under it. And that'll be the final out. So Walker comes in and ends the inning. But the hook circle now for Tech, left-hander. And an auspicious start to her outing, bounces it in. Yeah, Grizzer, the sophomore, the third Hokies pitcher we'll see, or we've seen today, 5-0 on the year, but she keeps it on the ground. She induces a lot of ground balls, but she'll use all four quadrants and also pull the string with a really nice changeup. 12th appearance of the year. 
And Jennings chops this one in front of the plate, beats it out. Boy, the speed of this Duke team is something. Yeah, Deanna Jennings just makes this look too easy. So much barrel control. Deadens it incredibly well. We'll see if her foot steps out of the box. Looks like it stays in and deadens it right in front of the catcher. And man, you just, you just can't get her out when she does things like that. So we're going to have a review, possibly. Let's take a look at it one more time. So the chalk line is a little bit blurred now, but if it's her left foot that goes anywhere outside of the box, looks like it stays in there and looks like it's a clean base hit for Deanna Jennings. Coach Dia Moore out voicing his displeasure. He's laughing, He's laughing. You got all the And I'm, you know, this pretty big hook there for more don't usually see him that fired up. Mike Lewis, the associate head coach over there, also given some chatter to our home plate umpire. D. Moore has been quite expressive tonight, maybe a little more vocal than we normally see him. And that might have been as much of anything an opportunity to go out and kind of chew on the home plate umpire one more time. Yeah, absolutely, and fire up your team as well. This is a moment in this game that's huge moving forward. He knows what he has as an offense. He knows he can get right back into this thing, so he is fighting for his team. Tapia, five-year starter for this Duke program. Jaeger bobbles it behind the plate. And so Jennings races to second base. Yeah, everybody in the ballpark knows that Deanna Jennings is a steal threat. But sometimes you don't even have to make the catcher throw it. It's the pressure that speed causes. And speed does not slump. There we see Zoe Yeager, the freshman, unable to transition cleanly. And Deanna Jennings takes it. Ball's coming into play this weekend. She has had a pair tonight. Oh, what a play! Tremendous job by Peck to come in and dive to record the out. Wow. That could be a Sports Center top 10 nominee. What a play by Bree Peck to come off the error earlier in this game and to make this kind of play dive extends and gets the out, and then it's next play, and that is an elite defensive move by Bree Peck to get up after the dive and play next play. It's, it was an interesting move there, 3-0, to, to have Giselle Tapia bunt against the sophomore who's, who's struggled, if you will, to find the zone early in her outing. Claire Davidson, the batter, Boy Peck, and she had to come on late. Sometimes you'll see people dive in the field when they don't need to. She had to stretch out in order to make that catch. Boy, what a play that was by Peck. Ball driven towards right. It is back. Goodbye, home run. Claire Davidson. Gets a pair back for Duke with the two-run shot. That is the 280th home run in Duke softball history. A double off the wall in the second, and here it's a bomb. Grizzard misses right over the white, and Claire Davidson this year, she'll make you pay. Perfectly on timed powers it over the right field fence and lengthens the Duke lead 10 to 4. So every pitcher for Virginia Tech has given up at least a run. And now Vega, who's got a pair of doubles tonight and has driven in three runs herself. Duke into double digits. First time in ACC play that's happened this season. 
or rather the first time it happened since the 15th at Florida State, scored 10 in that 10-5 victory. It's going to be a catch for the out. Green, and there are two away. On a gold, who also can spark some offense with the swing of a bat. Double-digit runs for the Blue Devils for the seventh time this season. And it's been historically, at least the last couple of years, around this time in the year where the Duke bats really start to get cranked up. Hard chopper, nice play by Rose. It's short, and the inning is over. The Devils have Lily Walker out there in relief of Kurd. She enticed the pop out by Jaeger. And whoa, what a catch that was! Jada Baker. Flashing some leather of her own. Web, web gems all around. It's free pack for the Hokies, but it's Jada Baker. Da 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 da. What a diving play by the shortstop. And just as crucially to get the first out of this inning and kind of stunt the momentum of this Hokies offense. So huge. A play by Baker, man. Ritter has a pair of hits in the game. Mrs. Lowen's two and one. Now it's three and one. Marissa Young said her defense has played better than it did last year. This one up and in to Ritter and looks like to me might have caught the top of the zone, might have been just up and out of the zone. But the Duke dugout giving it to our home plate umpire. So Ritter is aboard for the third time. It's been a tough night for the blue behind the plate from both dugouts. Yeah, both these dugouts are fighting for their pitchers, and you love that fire. And look, our umpires have a very, very difficult job, especially with these two pitching staffs that throw heat, high velocity, and a lot of movement. Little dribbler out to second. Out there, they can't get the turn. But Ritter is eliminated for the second out. Talked about the defense for Duke more solid than it was a season ago, and part of that is attributed from Marissa Young to Taylor Wyke, a former Tar Heel, and coming to the Duke program in her first season. Fagan fouls that away. And struck out looking in the first and then reached on a fielder's choice in the third would later come around and score. It was the first run off the RBI double for Peck and then it... There's a ball back to White. Or Walker, rather, and she makes the play and the Hokies go quietly in the top of at the ballpark. Game recap to this point. It has been a wild one. 14 combined hits midway through. Three pitchers used by Virginia Tech in the game so far, but the Duke offense not only putting the barrel on the ball, but 
Also, they've been really aggressive running the bases. Yeah, they've been menaces on the base pass, taking advantage of every single opportunity. But I really look at those first two innings. Four runs in the bottom of the first for Duke, four runs in the bottom of the second. They get out to that eight-run lead, and it really just stunted all of the energy coming from the Hokies' offense. Line drive, and Torres has reached all three times. That's her first knock. Duke with nine hits on the evening, and the Blue Devils will have the leadoff runner on. This marks the fourth inning that they've done that consecutively. So in each of the four tonight, leadoff runner has been aboard. Freilich, who came into bat for Zampa in the first. Hit into a fielder's choice, struck out back in the second. All one here to Freilich. All told, 0 for 2 tonight. And, you know, we talked about their base running, but we also talked about their ability to Bring it back to the basics, put the ball on the ground and bunt. And what that does to a defense is it forces the corners to play in. And forcing the corners in, it opens up the 5-6 hole and the 3-4 hole for these hitters. Young dancing out of the way there at third. Board. Virginia Tech also had a other pitcher warming in the pin. Yeah, that was an interesting one delivered by Cassie Grizzard because it looked like it was in the river. And if the ball is not completely in the batter's box as a hitter, you have to make an effort to get out of the way. There we see Freelick not stopping her swinging, swinging motion, I should say, takes it off the elbow guard and takes the free pass to first base. The free 60, Duke will pinch run with Zampa coming in, actually returning to run. For and here's Francesca another look. Here. Yeah, so right over the river there, and you saw Cassie Grizzard kind of look to the dugout and say, hey, say, wait a second, but nothing said by Pete Demore. And it has been a tough night for Jaeger as the backstop. Yeah, she struggled, and, and that's what speed will do to you as a catcher at times. It'll make you start moving too fast, trying to prepare for the next play instead of just receiving your pitcher. So another pass ball, the third of the game. Wow. Bunt laid down. All bases are safe. Wow, that was... Outstanding. She couldn't have rolled that out there any better. Yeah, this Duke offense even up 6-0, or six runs, I should say. Not afraid to put the ball on the ground and move things in motion. This time it's Sarah Goddard with a perfect bunt up the line. Not only does she advance the two runners, but she gets a single for herself. Knocked in. By Baker is one, now a second run on a really strong throw, and that was a little bit of an awkward swipe. She might have been avoiding the bat there with Zampa. Yeah, a really nice barrel here by Jada Baker. Controls her move forward, works down in the zone, and just goes with it right up the middle. Emma Ritter comes up throwing, but Zampa with a ton of speed and the awkward slide tries to do the slide around and tap. Her teammates are giggling. 
Three runs driven in tonight by Baker. Deanna Jennings singled and scored in the third. Field coming in here to deal with the way Jennings handles the bat. It's an RB, a two RBI single by Baker, who takes second on the throw. They're in scoring position here for Jennings. A really nice pitch there by Cassie Grizzard to go drop ball in on Deanna Jennings. If she has a sort of weak spot, it is that drop hard in. It's going to be two and two. Other action around the ACC. Clemson hammers BC 10 to two. North Carolina 8 2 over Notre Dame over in Chapel Hill. Georgia Tech in the top of the sixth over Syracuse. Up at the Sky Top Softball Stadium and top five is, that's a strikeout. Jennings is retired for the first out. Down in Tallahassee, it is 22nd ranked Florida State 6-4 over NC State, top fifth. Mentioned the Tar Heels. Duke still has them on the schedule. That'll be next weekend here in Durham. <laughs> 2 0 to Tapia. Tapia was retired last inning and squaring to bunt a dazzling catch by Peck, racing in from third. Soft liner drops through. And another run scores. Goddard comes home. Three in the inning for the Blue Devils. Back again for this Duke Blue Devil offense. This has been the situation we've seen, Patrick, where they've caused some chaos with the runner on first, putting herself in somewhat of a pickle. It's going to be low for a ball. Jaeger came out, went through a series of signs defensively on what to do with runners on the corners, and just one down here. Two-run homer and a double tonight for Davidson. Eighth round tripper of the year. Swung over the top of that one, and it's one and one. That's a really nice off-speed pitch there by Cassie Grizzard, and that's, that's the pitch you got to keep hammering with Claire Davidson because if you miss over the white with velocity, she will make you pay. This one, another line drive, and it'll be into the glove of McMillan. Tagging and scoring is Baker, and then Tapia takes second. So Davidson, also a three RBI evening. Yeah, and we talked about giving her a steady diet of the change-ups. There, she just drives it out to right. But the base running by Duke. Of course, Baker scores there, but for Giselle Tapia to take the extra 60 feet just adds more and more pressure on this Hokies defense. Eighth batter of the evening is Ve or the inning is Vega. Two for three, a pair of doubles, driven in a couple of runs. Vega didn't like that call, did you? 
No, you know, it's getting a little chippy. <laughs> Vega now at the point when you're up 10 runs, you can smile about it. But if this were a one-run ball game or tie ball game, I think that smile turns into a frown, maybe. 2-2 two -two has fouled back. Gold is on deck, and you would much rather deal with her to start off an inning and nobody on the base. Or nobody on base, or nobodies. We'll reach out and tap. Almost got it up. Virginia Tech with Bree Peck, 4, 5, and 6. McMillan, Chatfield will follow, so three pretty good candidates for the Hokies to have up as they try to extend the game here. Duke has scored at least two runs in every inning tonight. Four in the first, second, and fourth. Pretty locked in Duke club coming into tonight. Virginia Tech. Kind of shell-shocked it seemed. Duke was really loose in the pregame. A lot of swagger as you noted. They're having a lot of fun in the dugout right now. Little nubber played by Toppy at first, one down. It has not been the first game of a series that has been the issue for Duke. It's been that second game at Louisville last weekend and Florida State that have been a little bit of a trouble spot this year. Yeah, absolutely. And when talking to Coach Young about that game, too, and how they've dropped, you know, of the games they've dropped in ACC play, it's been on that game, too. She says, we're still trying to figure out why that is. And for Duke, you got to hit the reset button for tomorrow because it is a completely different game. you got to remember, they have not seen Lindsey Grine yet. Lim Emma Limley, excuse me, did not pitch a ton today. So tomorrow could be a completely different game. Duke has bounced back on those occasions where they did lose, obviously, and been great in game three. Mullen swings over that one. Had a three-run homer in the third. Part of a four-run Hokie inning. And Gold made a great play in that inning, or this game could be a run or two closer not in who knows not be a 10 run affair and they've kept the inning going a little bit too for Virginia Tech that was a tremendous play that she made two balls and a strike here to Corey McMillan towards the gap and it is out of here McMillan a two homer game a solo shot this time and she'll touch them all as Virginia Tech gets on the board. Stay hot, Corey McMillan. She makes this look entirely too easy. Lily Walker is going to miss over middle away. And it's a line drive for McMillan as she kills time, finds a barrel, really nice launch angle, and hits a line drive over the fence for the Virginia Tech Hokies. It was a laser, wasn't it? That was a shot. Chatfield has walked a pair of times tonight. Big cut. Goes foul. And, you know, this game kind of reminded me of, you know, a March Madness game where one team scores 20 early. And it's just hard to climb back from that. But I think if you're Virginia Tech at the hotel tonight, you recognize you had a lot of good at-bats all game long. They haven't seen Lindsey Grind. They barely saw Emma Limley. You're not in a terrible position moving forward in this series. And there's still a lot of softball left to play. Walker steps back. Yeah, 
Oh, what a play by Gold. Across the diamond, two down. What a gold star by that one. Yeah, Patrick, they call it the hot corner for the reason, for a reason, I should say. On a goal, making it look easy. A shot by Chaffield, but it's the backhand spin move and fire over by the junior. And got her by a plenty. Blue Devil fans getting vocal, coming to life here. As Duke tries to close this out. And we talked about how Duke has yet to see Lindsey Grind, but Virginia Tech has yet to see the ace for Duke, Jayla Wright. So primed for a matchup tomorrow. ACC Network will have that one. Alex Perlman. will be there, Jenny. Dalton Hall will be, Dalton Hill will also be with him. That'll be a great one tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And who knows what you and I will be facing on Sunday here, or Saturday here. In game three, it's going to be compelling softball all weekend long here in Durham. Luco. Strikes out in the Blue Devils. Race out to 1-0 in this 